Hey everyone, Nick DiRobertis here teaching you financial modeling. Today, we're going to be looking at an example of how to add Monte Carlo simulation to an existing Python model. This is part of our lecture series on Monte Carlo simulation. So we introduced Monte Carlo, we looked on how to build out a model with Monte Carlo, and we went through a more formal introduction and, and explanation of everything that we're doing. And now it's time to go and apply Monte Carlo simulation to our existing dynamic salary retirement model. And you can find the full completed um, exercise there on the course site so that you can um, take from that example to build out your own Monte Carlo simulations. So let's jump over here to the dynamic salary retirement model. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and restart kernel, run all cells, so that we can get everything defined to get ready to do our Monte Carlo simulations. Um, so we can add a new section here, Monte Carlo simulation. And uh, you would want to describe what you're doing here, what's the goal of the simulation, etc. I'm going to skip over that for brevity in the video and go right to the code. You can see all of that in the completed example. So we're going to have some additional inputs now from the simulation. Um, we're going to need to draw all the different inputs from normal distributions. And so we're going to have to have means and standard deviations of those distributions. Um, and so we can use our existing baseline input as the mean, so we don't have to add all the means. We do need to go and add these standard deviations though. And we're also gonna to need to have a number of iterations for the simulations as an input. And so we've got a number of different inputs to manage here. Because we've got a bunch of inputs to manage, it makes sense to create a data class to manage them. There's a number of ways you could set this up. You don't necessarily need to use the data class. You could go and add these inputs to the existing model inputs data class, but I'm just gonna create a separate uh, simulation inputs data class. And so in that, I'm gonna put the number of iterations. Uh, that would be an integer. Let's default it to 10,000. We're building this out, I'll put it at 100, then I'll go back and change it to 1,000 later. Uh, we're gonna have the starting salary, so let's look at what we uh, have in the model data. Starting salary. So we want a standard deviation for that. Um, and let's make that $10,000. And as you go to pick a standard deviation for your distribution, uh, so the mean, you know, whatever the kind of expected or most likely value is should be fine for the mean. We already have that from our baseline values, so that's fine. The standard deviations, you wanna think about uh, one standard deviation changes in either direction should happen often. So going between 70 and between 50 and 70,000 salary happens often, that makes sense. Two standard deviations in either direction should be not happening very often, but not rare either. Um, so that's going from a 40,000 to an 80,000 salary. That seems reasonable. Three standard deviation changes should be rare. Um, so going from 30,000 to uh, 90,000, yeah, those, those outer 30 to 40 and uh, 80 to 90 seem pretty rare for a starting salary. And outside, like four times standard deviation should like almost never happen. Um, so 20,000 starting salary or 100,000 starting salary for, you know, if this is some just undergraduate getting a job, both of those almost never gonna happen. Uh, so that seems like a reasonable standard deviation. And that's how you can think through what standard deviation should I pick for my distribution. So uh, then we can go 
to create the rest of our standard deviations, promo every n years, STD. Um, let's put that at 1.5. Um, the cost of living raise, let's put that at a half of a percent. Um, the savings rate, let's put that at 7%. And the interest rate, let's put that at 1%. Okay, and then we can create an instance of our simulation inputs. And we have everything there. So uh, the first step in the Monte Carlo simulation is to draw the random values of the inputs in order to run them through the model. Um, but looking at the inputs into our model, before we go and draw random values, we want to think about what are valid ranges of these inputs in our model? Is it possible that we're gonna hit some invalid numbers by pulling these random values? Um, so salary, how often you're getting promotions, cost of living raise, promotion raise, savings rate, um, all these things, really they need to be positive. They don't make sense if they're negative. Uh, and the interest rate, I would say, you know, if this was each individual year we were getting a random interest rate, sure, that can go negative. But if we're talking about a long-term interest rate, that also should be positive. Uh, so really, all these inputs that we're randomizing should be positive in the model. So knowing that, knowing the conditions that we need to have on our inputs, we can write functions to draw the random inputs that are always going to satisfy these conditions. So, um, well, first I'm gonna I'm gonna go back up to the top and import random uh, because we're definitely going to need that to draw the values from normal distributions. Um, and so, if you recall from the uh, continuous random variable material. Random.normal variant is able to draw values from a normal distribution. Um, and so let's just take an example mean here of two and a standard deviation of one. And I set these up because I know that this is going to go negative in some cases. Uh, it's only two standard deviations away from zero, and so that should happen decently often. Um, so putting the mean and standard deviation, then we get random values from that normal distribution. Um, and most of them are going to be positive, but some of them are going to come up negative. I saw one that was negative there. Um, so what we can do, um, we want to figure out a way so that every value that we draw is going to be positive. And let me actually just increase this so that it's a lot more likely to get negative numbers in here um, so that it's really clear that this is working appropriately. So what we can do is basically pick the value and then if we didn't get a value that meets our conditions, in this case, that is a positive number, then we're just gonna keep drawing values until we do. So what we can do is use a while loop for this because the while loop executes until um, some condition evaluates to false. As long as it's true, it's going to keep executing. And so this is the perfect fit here because we want to keep drawing random values until we meet our condition of it being positive. So that condition, so let's um, call this drawn value. Um, so our condition would be while the drawn value is less than zero. So as long as we're getting a negative number, keep going. 
So it's basically the opposite of the condition that you want. Like we want the drawn value to be greater than zero. So as long as greater than or equal to zero. So as long as uh, it's not the case that it satisfies that condition, as long as it's a negative number, then we're going to keep drawing additional values. Um, but then you go and run this and you'll get the name error that drawn value is not defined because we don't define it until here. So we also need to initialize it. So just initialize it to some value, which is going to satisfy the reverse condition. So basically put it at a value which is not acceptable for your model, and that will make sure that it goes into the while loop. And so then we just show the drawn value at the end. And then you'll notice that no matter how many times I run this, it's going to come up positive every time. Um, even though we saw it was decently often that we were getting negative numbers before. So now we have a function. We can call this uh, random normal positive, which takes a mean and a standard deviation um, and returns that drawn value at the end. So now we can just do random normal positive with whatever mean and standard deviation, and it's going to uh, give us values from the normal distribution basically, but just chop off any of those ones which are negative and try again. So we can apply this function across all the different inputs that we're randomizing in the model. So, um, and of course you would add a doc string to explain what this does. I'm just skipping that for uh, keep the video short, but definitely take a look at the completed example or having all the doc strings and everything filled out. So what we want to do next is we want to pick the random values of all these inputs. So uh, all these different inputs here, we want to randomly draw them. Um, so I'm just going to copy these to, to make my life easier to type this out. Um, so then I can get all the names of the different inputs there. Um, delete off these commas. Um, and then, um, we can then, um, oh, that's not going to work. Delete off these values as well. We're going to use the random normal positive function that we just created in order to, um, let me put a space there, random normal positive, um, and we want to um, do the mean there as the original input value, and we want to get from the sim data the uh, STD of that value. So then we have drawn all these different inputs. Uh, oh, let me add uh, data equals model data. Um, and then I named one of these. Oh, I did. I forgot to put promotional raise standard deviation. So. Um, Add that in here as well. Promo raise uh, STD, um, and what's the reasonable value for that? Uh, let's say five percent on that. So now, hopefully, this will work. Yep. Um, and so now we have all these different random values: interest rate, promotion, promotional raise, etc. We're getting random values for each, and they're always positive. <clears throat> Um, so then we can make a function out of this. Um, so we can call this, um, years for retirement, uh, simulation inputs. It's going to take the data and the sim data. Um, 
and um, then we can return all of these values. Um, so we want to return all these different values. And so it's doing it as a tuple. where we're returning all of these at once. So then we can call this years to retirement simulation inputs with the data and the sim data. And we're going to get all these different random values. And you can see they're changing each time. First one corresponds to the salary, second promotions every n years, and so on. So, um, now we're able to draw the random values of all our inputs. And so the next step is then to get to running a single simulation. So we are going to call this function. Um, and we want to save the results of it. So we can do, we can take the same thing to split it back out into the individual variable values. Uh, so you see I run that, and now all these things are defined individually. Um, and then we want to create the data. So create an instance of the model inputs with these values. Um, so I'm going to grab these again. And put them equal, put a comma, and now we should have that new data created appropriately. So I run this and I get the model data being created with random values now. Um, now that we have the data into the model inputs data class, now we can run the model. So we can do years to retirement equals, we have the years to retirement function. Um, we want to pass the new data and we want to make sure we don't need to print out the, do I have the print output in this version of the model? I might not. Um, okay. It seems it's not there. Let me quickly add it. Um, otherwise we're going to have a huge amount of output coming out of this. So if print output, uh, and just wrap all the print statements in that. Uh, three print statements here. Um, and then coming back over to here, now print output equals false. So with that, we get the years for retirement and we're gonna get, it should be different years for retirement, but we're getting the same years for retirement. So if the print output wasn't there, I think I might've used a version, yep, which had this model data mistake. <laughs> so make sure it flows all the way through, redefine that. Um, and now hopefully we'll get different years to retirement with each run of the model. And we're still not getting that, that's odd. Um, let me just restart this and run all the way through while I um, go back and Take another look. Um, uh, oh, we have. Oh, I was editing this Wells DF function. Okay, so this is the one that also had that model data mistake. Your data, data. Okay, we're good now. Hopefully, it should come through now. Yes, okay, now we're getting different years of retirement with each run of the model. So you definitely wanna do these checks on your own with your own model as you build it out. If one simulation does not work properly, then certainly 10,000 are not going to work properly either. Um, and now that we have the logic to produce one simulation, then we can wrap that up into a function. Um, so I'm gonna call this years of retirement single simulation 
It takes the data and the sim data. And then all this and return the years or we want to return more than just the years for retirement though. Um, we want to actually return all the inputs as well. So we can return all the inputs and the years for retirement um, so that we have all the inputs associated with the output. Um, so then when I call this, we then get all those inputs again, but also the output, the years for retirement as well. And that's all associated together. So now we can run a single Monte Carlo simulation with a single line of code. So now that we can do that, we want to get to running the full uh, Monte Carlo simulation process with however many iterations that we want. So um, we want to basically call this in a loop over the number of iterations. And all we're doing is just calling this a bunch of times and putting it into a list. So I'm going to use a list comprehension to simplify that loop. So just calling the function for i in range uh, sim data dot number of iterations. Um, call that all results. And then uh, we can look at, let's just look at the first five because there's going to be a lot in there. And you can see we're getting multiple runs of this with the inputs associated with the outputs. So then we can put this into a data frame. Have I imported minus? Uh, yep. Uh, so put this all into a data frame, pd.data frame of all results. And the columns, um, then we want to name these columns. So we're going to have starting salary first, and you want to go in the same order as whatever you have in the tuple. So starting salary, and then promos every n years. Um, then the cost of living raise. And then the promotion raise. And then the savings rate. And the interest rate. And finally, the years to retirement. And you don't want to have really long cells like this. It's just really difficult to read. So I'm going to split this onto multiple lines. It's within parentheses, and so I can split it. Um, and this is going to make the code easier to read. So then we should have our data frame created. And we see that here. So I have it set at 100 simulations right now. And that's why we have 100 rows in the data frame. Each row is one simulation. And we see all the input values associated with the output. So now we're able to run all the simulations. So let's make a function for that. Years to retirement. Uh, Monte Carlo takes the data and the sim data. And let's end in all this and return it. So now I can call this, and we should get the same thing. And of course, I could, uh, you know, change it and run for, uh, say, a thousand iterations, and then we would see a thousand rows in the data frame. So everything seems to be flowing through properly. So, um. Now we've got the simulation results and we can get them with a single function. Uh, let's go ahead and save those results into a data frame. So now we've got this data frame, but it doesn't have great formatting. We might want to apply some formatting to it. Um, so style format. Um, so starting salary, and I'm just going to, I want to probably format all of them. So I'm just going to copy these to get started with, um, and then starting salary, 
Um, that's going to be dollars. And I want it to have commas and zero decimal places. Promotions every n years. Um, that can just have one decimal places, one decimal place. Um, cost of living raise. That's going to be a percentage. We can give it up to two decimal places. Uh, promotion raise, same thing. Really, all the um, percentages, same thing. Promotion raise, uh, a savings rate, and interest rate. And then use to retirement. Um, we can make it zero decimal places. Um, Okay, so now we see that with proper formatting. Um, and the other thing we might wanna do is add some coloring to it. Um, so I'm gonna add the background gradient uh, with the red, yellow, green color map on just the year's retirement column. So I see that coming there um, and you be careful that you don't style your data frame, which has 10,000 rows in it, because it is going to show all of it. Um, and we'll notice that um, this is going the opposite of the direction that we want, right? It's showing green for high values, but really green is, uh, or low is good in our model. So we want to reverse the color map. And so we can add underscore R. And now uh, when the years of retirement are low, we're seeing the dark green, and when they're high, we're seeing the red. So um, then we can wrap this in a function, style df takes the data frame um, and then returns this so that we can just, uh, here's a shortcut which gives you the top five rows, so just look at the data. We can then apply style df to that to just keep a look into our data in the model. Um, and it's useful to say uh, how many simulations were run. Um, so we can do the length of data frame uh, simulations were run. So now we have the results from the simulation and we want to visualize and analyze them. So let's visualize the results. Um, well, so this uh, style data frame, that's the first part, um, just example results. Um, and this, this can go at the end of the results, there we go. Um, the next what we want to visualize is the distribution of the output. Here's to retirement. Um, so we can take this um, data frame, use to retirement, and do a histogram um, and see the output there. Um, let me go ahead and just run this with more iterations at this point. Um, so that we'll have a good idea what the output is going to look like. Um, 50 is not going to be enough bins for that. Let's try 100. Uh, that's a little bit more reasonable. Um, so then um, we want to create the um, probability table. So uh, probability table, um, and we can get the quantiles. Um, we're going to do this. I divide uh, five percent um, percentiles. So I have a twenty for i in range uh, from one to twenty. Um, oh, in range. Um, so we get that five percent to ninety-five percent. And then we can do df.quantile on that. Um, so here's another advantage of the uh, 
data frame styler function pattern. Now we have a different data frame, which is in the same structure. We can apply the same function to that. So uh, now this uh, probability table is nicely formatted as well. And this is telling us, you know, only 5% of the time will you be able to retire in less than 21 years. Um, and 5% of the time, it could take longer than 39 years to retire based on the distributions that we have assigned. So uh, next, now we're going to get into analyzing the relationship of the inputs uh, versus the outputs. So the first that we can do is uh, plots of inputs versus uh, use retirement. Um, so if we do df.plot.scatter um, and we tell it uh, the y is used to retirement and then the x is whatever um, input that we want to look at, then we're going to get a scatter plot as a result. Uh, so we want to do this, but we want to do it for all the different possible inputs. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to grab this list. Um, so we can call this the um, input columns. Um, and then for each column in the input columns, then we want to do this scatter um, with that particular column. So then we uh, now have all the scatter plots for each of the different inputs so we can see the relationships. Um, and we don't need years of retirement. Uh, we only want the inputs, not the output here. So I'm going to remove that one. Um, and you know, you can see some of these have clearer patterns than others. Like here with savings rate, you can see it's kind of a curve here. That's a fairly defined pattern. Um, and with cost of living raise, it's a little more of an ambiguous cloud here. Um, so just based on the scatter plots, it suggests a fairly strong relationship between savings rate and years to retirement and not a very strong relationship between the cost of living raise and years to retirement. So then we can go on to the quantitative uh, analysis of the relationship between the inputs and the outputs. Um, and that is through the uh, multivariate regression. So we're going to use the stats models package in order to run the regression. So I'm going to import stats models uh, dot API as SM. And this is another one of those conventions. Just take this import and use it as is. And then we'll use SM to interact with the stats models library. Um, so what we want to do is um, I'm going to say that our output column is years for retirement. Um, and we already had our input columns defined here. Um, so ultimately what we're doing is we're going to, um, get our X variables as the, um, uh, input columns from the data frame. So then we have just the inputs, no use to retirement on here. We're going to get uh, the um, years to retirement here as our Y variable. Um, and then we're going to create the regression model object. So we're going to do an ordinary least squares regression, OLS regression, uh, which is the standard and we're going to put the Y first and then the X. And then in order to get results from that, we're going to fit the model, call.fit on the model. And then we call the summary method on the result object in order to produce this summary that you see here. 
Um, so now the top part is the general fit statistics. Not too important for this. What we're really concerned about is the p-values and the coefficients. So all the p-values are low, and so there's no evidence from the p-values that any of these uh, inputs are unrelated to the outputs. It seems that there is an evidence of a relationship with each one of them. And we can look at the coefficients in order to interpret the um, strength of that relationship. But there is one other thing that we need to do here, um, which is that um, the you'll notice here that there's no constant or intercept. If you're familiar with uh, running regressions, you typically have a constant or intercept as one of the x variables, and that is not included by default in stats models. You do have to add it explicitly. So uh, in order to do that, we do sm.addConstant. Um, and then in here, we do has const equals true. And then when we run this again, now we'll see we have this constant in there. Um, and when we look at the x, that basically added a column of ones into the model. And that's how it, it works with the constant. Um, and we're not going to be diving into the theory of, of OLS regressions, why you should have this constant, but just in general, uh, you should probably have the constant, and so make sure to add it. So, you know, you can just copy paste this code snippet for your own model and just switch out the output columns and the, the output column and the input columns. So now we have the regression results. Um, and we want to interpret them. Um, so we can go ahead and already look at these and start doing some interpretations. You'll notice um, that for promotions every n years, we have a 1.2648 coefficient. So what that's saying is if we get, uh, if it takes one year longer to get a promotion on average, that's going to lead to a 1.26 additional years it takes until we get to retirement. Um, and so another question is, you know, which of these uh, inputs is most impactful, which matters the most? And so you might think, well, just whichever have the biggest coefficients, those should be the most impactful, but that's not the case. You have to also consider the standard deviation of the inputs. So we can evaluate that by looking at the standard deviation on the data frame. That will tell us the standard deviation of each of our inputs. And those should basically be the standard deviations that we set out in our simulation data, um, which they are. Um, so we take that standard deviation. And then on this result object, we have result.params that gives us a pandas series which has all those coefficients that we saw up here in the nice summary output. So what we can do is we can actually multiply these two things together and that gives us what's called standardized coefficients. Um, so what that is saying is now it's instead of a one unit increase in the input variable, it's a one standard deviation increase in the input variable. So that's saying that a one standard deviation increase in the cost of living raise decreases years to retirement by 0.9 years. So these coefficients are comparable in terms of which has the biggest impact. So you can basically think in the absolute value of these, whichever are the biggest are gonna have the biggest impact on the model. So here it's saying that savings rate has the biggest impact on the years to retirement, followed by the starting salary. Um, and in your model, you're going to want to include some text at the bottom that interprets this um, and draws conclusions from the coefficients, talking about the original coefficients as well as the standardized coefficients um, so that uh, it's very clear for the reader of the model basically what was important from 
doing all of this analysis. So that's the general process of adding Monte Carlo simulation to an existing model and analyzing the relationship between the inputs and the outputs. Now, um, to go along with this, um, there is an analogous lab exercise here. Um, so the lab exercise for this is then to do something very similar for the project one model, the project one Python model. Now I'm not asking you to do it with every input there. Um, here in the level one, just do it with the interest rate, just randomize that and then run 10,000 simulations, get the years or the MPV results, visualize, um, <clears throat> and then create this table of probabilities and um, get the chance that the MPV will be more than 400 million. And then in the level two, um, then you're going to be doing the same thing, continuing on, but then also drawing the number of phones from a normal distribution as well and doing the same kind of analysis, but then following it up with um, <clears throat> analyzing the relationship between the inputs and the outputs. So doing the scatter plots and the multivariate regression, and then interpreting the results of that. So that wraps up um, adding Monte Carlo simulation to Python models. Thanks for listening and see you next time.